it's Heather here from Heather's Country Crochet. Um, I have finished a diamond painting and I am getting ready to kit down this kit and so that I can kit up another one. Um, I do my diamond paintings one at a time because I don't have enough storage boxes to do more than one at one time and I don't want all that stuff mixed up or anything anyways so but that is my finished diamond painting I think it turned out gorgeous so I'm gonna move this out of the way and I thought that I would just kind of show y'all the process of what I do when I am kidding down so these are all leftover diamonds from previous diamond paintings that I've done. And what I do is <clears throat> these um, are just little containers that I put the diamond number, the DMC number on. I just put a little label sticker on the top there and then whatever I have left over at the end, I just put them in here. That way, if I was to ever have a diamond painting that didn't have enough diamonds of one color, I have a stash here that I could just go to <coughs> and um, use some out of if I needed to. So, um, these are all of my leftover diamonds from the kit that I was just doing. So, <clears throat> first what I'll do is I will just go one by one and start um, emptying out the leftover diamonds. Now, as you can see, what I'll do is I'll look for this number here, the 400, on all of my little tabs here to see if I already have any of this color. And if I don't already have this color, then I'll take my little labels here, and I don't have that number yet, so I will just make me a label for it just like that <clears throat> and get me an empty container here put that on there right on the top there and then I'll open that up. <clears throat> and I always dump in my um, contents first before taking this label off so that I don't get any of them mixed up. So I'll just dump what's left of there in there. Then close that up. Now I can take this label off. And sometimes because I don't reuse my labels but sometimes they stick really good and sometimes they don't so um, and then you can use like that goo gone stuff or whatever to get all the rest of that stickiness off for of there um, but personally I'm just fixing to Put a new sticker on there so I'm just I'm not even gonna take it off I'm just gonna leave it on there <coughs> so um <coughs> so that's my process for kitting down so when I get ready to kit up I will I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting all of these over into these containers and then when I get ready to kit up and um, put my new labels and put my new diamonds in my 
containers that I use over here while I'm doing my kit, I will meet back up with y'all to show y'all that part. One thing that I forgot to mention is if you'll notice, like right here in these two right here, I have two of these and three of these. Um, sometimes you tend to have a lot of one color, especially, you know, after you do a few kits. So you'll see I have these three are full and then I have some space in this one. I have a little space left in this one. So when one gets full, I just create a new container for that number um, because I have small containers. So they make bigger containers for storage though. Just wanted to point that out. Okay, so now I'm ready to get started kitting up this new diamond painting here and this is one that my son ordered that he wants me to do with him and this uh this is a little kit that comes in all or should come in all um you got some tweezers a pen a little pen holder um some wax there and then a tray I prefer to use this one because it has the spout on it so it makes pouring them out a lot um, easier but this here is like I said one that my son wanted to order he's recently gotten into anime and he wanted he had said he wanted an anime poster and I was like you know that they have anime diamond paintings right and um, so he picked him out one and <clears throat> I wanted him to pick one out that had a lot of the color blocking so that it wouldn't take me very long to do it because I know that I'm not going to be <clears throat> very interested in doing this. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of cool looking, I guess. <clears throat> but as you can see, it has the color chart over here for your diamonds and in this one there's 24 colors and that works out perfectly for my little containers here because there's five on each one and they screw together so um they all just stack on top of one another and um my little storage box that i bought here it looks like this it comes with two deep ones and then the rest of them are the smallers here. Um, but I bought this at Walmart. I think it was like 13 bucks and um, it works for me. I mean, I'll probably, you know, if I decide to do like, th this holds 28 colors and I got it over, I think in like the bead section of the crafts department or whatever. Um, but if I decided to, you know, do bigger diamond paintings that had, um, you know, more colors than, than that, I would, I might would upgrade, but so far I haven't. So these are the diamonds and most of the time they come packaged like this. Um, let's see. So, they come attached in strips, just like this. And so, what I usually do is I take my color chart, or see on the package here, let me get it closer so you can see. You can see the DMC numbers written right there. And then all of this other stuff, this is like how many's in there or this, yeah, this is like how many's in there, 40 times 30, ever how many that is, that's how many diamonds is in there. Um, no, 40 by 30, my bad, that's the size of the painting. This is the 24th color. Um, 
and this is the um sometimes they'll have how many's in there on the bag but they don't on these this is the dmc color this is um labeling um what number the diamond painting itself is so you can see right up here that those numbers match that way if your diamonds were to if you wanted to store your painting separately from your diamonds you would know that these go to this diamond painting um and then again like i said that's the size of the painting and this just means that it's the 24th color and i'll show you that Let's see where it says 24 and the number is 3865 i don't know if it's focusing on that or not but 3865 so, okay, so what I do is I take the color chart, and some people, you know, have like the label printers here. Let me zoom in here so y'all can see what I'm doing better. So, I take this color chart here, and I take my labels. And I put on my labels, move some of this stuff out of the way. <clears throat> so I put on my label, like right here, number one is the symbol K, and it's the DMC number 150. So what I do is I write the number one, and then I do a slash, and then I write the DMC number on there, like that. And I'll do that. I'll make my labels for all 24 colors. That way, I'll have them all written out and ready to put on my containers. So, I'll show you how I'll put them on my containers in just a second when I get them all written out. Okay, so now I have all of my labels done out. So, next what I'll do is I'll go through here and I'll look to see... How many bags are there per number? All right, so there's one of each of those. Okay, and then there's 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 15. Okay, so there's two of 14. So I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to cut those apart so that they stay together by their self and lay those to the side. So then there's 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. So <clears throat> that's the only one that has two bags. All right, and it is color number 14. So I take it first. And because this is just because of the way that, you know, my storage system is. So when I have two bags, let me put it in camera. When I have two bags like this, I know that both bags are not gonna fit in one of the smaller containers. So I'm gonna put my label on one of my bigger containers there, like that. And then I'll unscrew it so that it's open. And then I take my scissors and I just snip off a little corner edge like that. And I'll pour them in. Sometimes you have to make sure that you get all of your diamonds out of the little baggie because um, sometimes it has static electricity in there. So um, they, they tend to stick to the bags sometimes. So I'm just going to pour in this second little baggie here. And 
put my lid back on. So now I have that color done. All right, so now that I know that that's the only color that I really needed one of those bigger jars for, so now what I'll do is I'll just take my stack, my you know, and then just start putting my numbers on just like that in order. That way I can just fill up each little container one by one. And I try not to use this bottom one because the way that these are made and the top screws off like this up here, um, I have to go a little lower with my labels. So this label kind of like rides on the top of this one where it unscrews from. So, um, if I can help it, I try not to use the bottom one here because my labels are bigger, so they kind of hang off the bottom. Um, but I do use them if I have to. But because I only have 24 colors, I should be able to get away with not having to use the bottom one. So, we'll see. <clears throat> And I just stick my labels on there one by one. So that's the second jar done. It's a little bit of a process, but it's not extremely it doesn't take extremely long um, with my process here um, I kind of have it pretty organized so it doesn't take me that long um, now some people there's several different ways of storage um, you know things there's bigger storage containers there's different storage kits um, some people use like the little baggies as their storage. Um, personally, the baggies, um, they are more aggravating to deal with to me. I don't like the baggie system. I'd rather have the little storage containers, um, because I just don't have patience for all those little Ziploc bags. I get aggravated with them and then just want to throw them away. <laughs> Um, but I mean, you know, like I said, um, you can, um, you can, you know, surf around and see what, uh, system you think would work best for you. Um, when I first started diamond painting, I used the baggy system, for my leftover diamonds, I'm gonna put this one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, I used my the bags that came with the kits for the leftover diamonds, but when I got my little storage containers. Um, I'm just gonna stick that one on that big one because there's usually quite a bit of those colors. So. But um, when I got my little storage containers, um, I think I ordered them from like Amazon or something. And like I said, they have the bigger storage containers, but I just personally, I don't, um, really I don't care for the bag system and I don't have to have a huge container um, I, um, 
the little containers work fine for me. Um, I try to go as cheap as possible with this stuff as I can. So now I just start filling up my little containers and there's one that is stuck. There it goes. No, it didn't. Come on down. Get out of there. So I just start filling up my little containers by the number. And because I have them in order, it goes pretty quick. I just cut them separately. Snip off the little edge there like that. And just pour them in. And occasionally with these little bags, um, because of how they're you know, packaged or whatever um, through the machine. I don't know if y'all can see that little pink dot in there, but you get some stragglers from other colors. Some people separate them and go ahead and get them out of there. I don't mind. I don't care. I don't, um, I just leave them in there and separate it as, you know, as I'm doing my diamond painting. Once it gets poured out into my tray, then I'll uh, put it where it goes but this is pretty much it I mean it's it's not a huge process or anything um, I will however um, come back when I finish pouring all of my diamonds up and show y'all how I get my canvas ready for um, actually putting some diamonds on it with I'll show y'all how I do the washi tape on there in case y'all are interested in that so I will be back when I finish putting all these diamonds in these containers all right so I have all of my colors in my containers now so I can just close it up and it's ready to be used when I get ready to start the diamond painting. Now, the first thing I try to do is kind of smooth out this um, uh, canvas some. So I, I like to try to get my, um, my clear film that's over the top of it here to lay a little flatter across there because that way my washi tape will lay flat on there so I just kind of fold it back and then roll it back onto the canvas so that for the most part, there won't be a lot of wrinkles and it'll be flatter. And I'll try to smooth it as I go. And this also will help flatten the canvas out soon. So you can see how it's a lot smoother looking now compared to this side over here with the wrinkles. <clears throat> so then I'll just pull back this side and then do the same thing. Just kind of roll it back. Smoothen it as I go. keep those wrinkles out of there. I 
because if you have a lot of wrinkles in your um, film on your canvas, then um, the washi tape won't really lay very good on there because washi tape is not real sticky to begin with. Um, so, so yeah, see, that's laying a lot smoother. And then I just smooth it out. Now, I take and I trim off some of the edge of this paper here because the washi tape, like I said, it's not real sticky as it is. So, therefore, and I'm trying to do this where you can see what I'm doing, but I just trim a little bit off of the edge there. Well, I thought I was. Um, I'm going to try to do it this way so that you can see. Okay, yeah, it's cutting now. So I just trim off that edge so that when I do do my washi tape on here, it will stick to, it'll stick to the canvas. At least some, not a whole lot, but it will some. So I just trim it just a little bit, um, not all the way completely to the painting itself. Um, and I don't get a perfectly straight line or anything. I don't, <clears throat> I'm sure there's other ways probably to do this, but this is just the way that I do it. This is just what works for me. So. On that top side, there's not very much to trim on this one. So, so once I do that, I get my washi tape. This plastic is stuck to my fingers. It will not come off. There we go. So I get my washi tape. And now there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. Um, some people will, you know, go really far out with it and like do specific measurements and things like that. Um, me, I personally, I just kind of eyeball it. Um, <clears throat> trying to get my washi tape unstuck from itself. Okay, so here's my washi tape. And I just pick, all right. Let me zoom you back in here. Okay. So, I just pick a section. And I just, like, section it off. And... I start. And I just put my washi tape down. Like that. And then I just keep it in a line. Now, as I said, there are several different ways to do 
all of this, to be honest. This is just the way that I do it. So, <clears throat> you can feel free to do it your own way, whatever you're comfortable with. This is just the way that I do it. And you want to keep, if you do do it this way, you want to keep your washi tape in a straight line, you know, so that your section will, um, you won't have uneven sections. So... And then I just, so that's my first section. And I usually do like two, I'll have like three sections long ways. And then the same thing going, let me zoom you back out so you can see what I'm doing. Um, you can, and I'll, you, you do the same thing long ways across here. And I normally do like, three sections long ways so then I have like nine boxes and it just makes the painting easier to um, do that way because then you're not trying to you know um, fold this back because when you fold this back um, they make things called um, Oh goodness, I can't remember what they're called, but, but you have to peel this back to put your diamonds on there. So this also kind of helps, because once you have that section in there, you just kind of trim it up one side, and then you fold it back. Here, I'll just show you. Go ahead and do this first section here. <clears throat> Okay, so now you have a section here. So you'll actually, what I, the way that I do it, okay, I peel this back, and I don't have like a straight blade or whatever. If you have one of those like scoring knives or whatever, it works a lot better. But I just like clip that little plastic piece there, and then I just kind of use the washi tape itself as a scoring method and it just peels back and then stick your washi tape back down and then it works as a barrier to hold that back because you can just fold it and it helps to hold that back while you work on that section. So, and, um, you know, if also, it, if you only get like a little bit done, you can put it back so that your glue doesn't get anything in it, any kind of fuzz or hair or whatever. So it protects it and it helps, you know, to do that so that's why I section off like I do so yeah so I'm gonna get started working on this and I will see y'all in my next video um, and I will show y'all my progress on this soon um, I may finish it quick I don't know just depends on how much I 
actually get to work on it. We'll see. So, well, I appreciate y'all uh, coming and watching. I hope y'all have enjoyed it. Like I said, this isn't really like a tutorial type thing or anything. This is just showing y'all how I do my kits and how I get them ready to get started on them and everything. Um, so, you know, feel free to do them however you choose to do them. Um, you know, and if you... Um, feel like um, the way that I do them would it would benefit you and you know help you out and uh, doing them then by all means copy me if not pick your own way that's absolutely fine too so thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next time bye guys